Hi students, here we're going to learn about combining functions. We're going to talk about things like combining them with addition, and subtraction, multiplication, and division, uh, as well as combining things with something called composition, that's plugging functions into each other. And then finally, the thing that's not listed here is dealing with functions that are inverses or that have inverses, and how to find these inverses. Some of this may be review for you, some of this might be new for you. The first part of combining functions is dealing with function operations. Uh, and really, this is just kind of a, a measure in understanding notation, where we have uh, some kind of awkward notation to describe the way that we uh, combine functions in different ways. In dealing with function operations, that's addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, uh, we have things that look like multiplication problems, but really what this is, is saying that we're taking the two functions, f and g, we're adding them together, and then we're plugging in the number 2. Uh, the way that we tend to write this, to make it a little bit easier on our brains, to write this is f of 2 plus g of 2. In other words, plugging in each of these values to get our answers and then adding them together. Same thing's going to happen if we're doing division. Uh, this would be f over g of x, and a way to write that would be f of x over g of x. And then we've got something where we're looking at f times g of x, which is the same thing as saying f of x times g of x. Next up, we've got to talk a little bit about something called composition of functions. You've been doing this for quite a while, but you haven't necessarily talked about this in this language. So I've come up with two functions here. f of x is equal to 4x minus 3, and g of x is equal to x squared plus 1. And what we're going to do is to find f of g of x. In other words, what is the function when I plug g of x, the whole thing, into f of x? I like doing this with two separate colors, uh, so what I'm going to do is to write my function f of x, but instead of x, I'm going to leave a space with some parentheses. And where that x used to be, I'm going to put that whole function, x squared plus 1. I have now plugged in a function where I used to have an x. So doing some distribution, we end up getting 4x squared plus 4, and then minus 3 would give us plus 1 as our final answer. We can also do this numerically. Uh, I'm going to find g of g of 2. That also gives you a hint that you can plug functions into themselves, and that's okay. And what I'm going to do first is find g of 2. So g of 2 is going to be, that's x squared plus 1, uh, so that's 5. And then to find g of g of 2, I'm going to take that answer and plug it back in. So g of 5 would be 5 squared is 25, plus 1 is 26. And then finally, we're going to spend a minute talking about inverses. Uh, inverses we talked about earlier in the year are when we have uh, algebraically functions that undo each other. Graphically, these things are reflections over the line y equals x. And in terms of how they deal with coordinates, we switch our x and our y's. Much earlier in the year, we talked about uh, finding an inverse for f of x by switching our x and y variables. So writing this as x equals 3y minus 4, and then getting the new y by itself. So adding 4 divided by 3, we get x plus 4 divided by 3, and that would equal f inverse of x, which is how we read this. This is not f negative 1 or f negative 1 times x. This would be called f inverse of x. In terms of looking at tables or graphs, uh, if g of 0 asks the question, what is the output of the function g of x when x is 0? So we want to tell the output here, which is 1. The inverse uh, asks the backwards question. So if I have an output for g of 7, okay, what would my input be? In this case, that would be 2. Another way to do this would be to flip your table around and rewrite this as x and g inverse of x and read it backwards, and that's okay too. Whatever makes sense to you is totally fine. So let's try a couple of these. Uh, first off, we're going to find f plus w of negative 1. And to do that, I'm going to think about this as, okay, I've got to find f of negative 1. And I don't have an f here. I think this was supposed to be some other functions. Um, I don't know. Let's call this q. 
because I definitely have a function for q. So we're going to find q of negative 1, uh, and that's going to be negative 5 times negative 1 is 5, plus 11 is 16. And to that, I'm going to add w of negative 1. w of negative 1 is going to be 5. 16 plus 5 is 21. Next up, we're finding q over z of 2. So what I'm going to do is find q of 2. I'm going to do this in different colors so we don't get mixed up. So q of 2 is going to be 1, it looks like. And then z of 2 is going to be 1 as well. When I find q over z of 2, I get 1 over 1, which is equal to 1. And then finally, we've got w of z of negative 4. This is composition. So we're going to find z of negative 4 first. z of negative 4 is going to be negative 3. And what we're doing then is finding w of negative 3. And if I take a look at my table, w of negative 3 is going to be 1. Here's some to try on your own. Please pause the video now, and when we come back, you'll see the answers. And here are your answers. Let's try a couple of these. First, we got q of q of x. What that means is we're going to take q of x, which is negative 5x plus 11. And instead of x, I'm going to write the entire function q of x. This is kind of weird, because we're like plugging this in for itself. So minus 5x plus 11. And then, actually at this point I'm done, I can do some algebra to simplify some things. And when I do some distribution, we get 25x minus 55, and then we got plus 11 is going to be minus 44. To find r inverse of x, again this is review, uh, we're going to set up an equation, and usually we do this by switching x and y. So let's write this as x is equal to 2 minus 7x. We're going to solve for, I'm sorry, 2 minus 7y. Oof. We're going to solve for our new y. And when we do that, we end up getting y is equal to x minus 2 divided by negative 7. That is our inverse function. That's the function that would undo this. Now we've got a couple of these to try on your own. You'll notice I changed uh, two of the letters from W to R to make this work. And what I'd like for you to do is to try these, press pause, and then come back to get the answers. Here are your answers. Thanks for watching.